Are you overwhelmed with the amount of raw photos you need to process? If that's the case, then stick around because in this video, I'm going to be showing you a workflow for automatically processing raw files with local adjustments, taking advantage of the latest version 2.6 AI-powered selection tools. Do note that this builds upon my previous videos on batch processing, so do watch those first if you have not done so. But before we demonstrate the workflow, let's quickly run through the challenges of automating processing of raw files with local adjustments. The first problem is the limited local adjustment tools in Develop Persona. While Affinity Photos Develop Persona, which is its dedicated workspace for raw processing, offers basic local adjustment tools like the overlay paint and overlay gradient, it does not provide any AI-driven tools necessary to enable automated editing. The second problem is loss of non-destructive raw editing in Photo Persona. On the other hand, while it is possible to edit the raw file in Photo Persona, which does have AI-driven subject selection, the downside is the editing quality will be degraded as Photo Persona processes raw data in a rasterized pixel-based format, which reduces dynamic range and editability. You can see this clearly when comparing edits side by side. Notice how much better the detail recovery and adjustment quality is in Develop Persona over Photo Persona. The third problem is the lack of precision of AI selection tools. As discussed in previous videos, Affinity's AI selection tools struggle with intricate or low contrast edges such as hair, fur, or foliage, often requiring more manual refinement. In addition, its select subject feature, which uses AI to detect primary subjects, is less reliable than competitors. It may misidentify subjects in cluttered images or fail to isolate them cleanly. So those are some of the challenges of automating raw processing with local adjustments. Next, let's run through a workflow which hopefully will address these drawbacks while yet still saving time by automating repetitive tasks. To start off, I'll open a raw file. Let's say we want to edit the raw files in a way wherein the subject will be brightened while the background darkened to enhance subject focus. So how do we do that? Because of the limitations of Affinity Photo, the best way to do that is by blending exposures. And we can do that with the following steps. First, I'll click Develop to bring us to Photo Persona. I'll add the macro by clicking on Window, Macro. There, the macro panel is added in. Next, I'll click on the Record button to initiate the process of capturing our editing actions. Next, I'll edit the image in Develop Persona. This image will serve as the background exposure. I'll click the Develop Persona button. I'll lower the exposure. There, the background exposure is now done. Next, I'll duplicate the layer. But how do we duplicate? Do note that one important tip when using macros is to make sure that any editing step be adaptable for different images. As such, for the duplication step, I'll avoid actions like clicking on a specific layer or using shortcut keys like Control C and Control V, which might work for the current image but not for other images. Therefore, the right way to duplicate a layer when using macros is via the menu. I'll click Layer, Duplicate. There, the layer is now duplicated. In this case, the top layer will serve as the exposure for the subject, while the bottom layer, the background exposure. I'll click the Develop Persona button. In the basic panel, I'll increase the exposure to properly expose for the subject. I'll click Develop to go back to Photo Persona. Next, let's make the selection. I'll click Select, Select Subject. There, the selection is done. I'll click the Mask Layer button. And there you go, the blending is done. As you can see, the subject is properly brightened while the background properly darkened. Now you might argue that the selection was not perfect 
and there are still errors. Unfortunately though, this is as much as we can do for the macro as performing any further refinements, say via the refine brush, will not be adaptable to other images. So let's work with this. I'll stop the macro. I'll click the Add to Library button. I'll name the macro. So there, the macro has been created. Next, let's test the macro on other raw files to see if it works. Let's open our first test raw file. To run the macro, it's as simple as clicking on it. As you can see, it did most of the work as intended. However, looking at the mask, there are some errors. Not a surprise since Affinity's AI-driven selection is intended as a starting point, not a one-click solution. No problem, it's easy enough to fix. With a black paintbrush, I'll paint on the mask to correct any errors. And with just a few extra strokes, we get a pretty good result in far less time than if we started from scratch. Here is the before and the after. Next, let's try it on another image. Once again, the result looks good. Let's look at another example. Once again, the result is not perfect as the adjustment looks overdone. No problem, I'll bring down the opacity for a better blend. I'll paint on the mask to fix any errors. And there you go, a good result. Here is the before and the after. Here is another example. So there you have it, that was four examples. I think it is pretty clear that the macro works. So that is how you automate processing of raw files with local adjustments, and that's with the help of macros and image blending. While it would have been preferable to get a more precise one-click AI masking solution from Affinity, there's no doubt this workflow will still speed up your editing by a lot, while not compromising on quality. By the way, do note that this macro becomes especially useful when used as part of batch processing. If you want to know how to do that, do check out my videos on that topic. I leave the links in the description. So I hope you found this video helpful. Do let me know if you have any other better ways to edit raw files with local adjustments in Affinity Photo. Write it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.